Hi, my name is Florian Kammerer. I'm from the Austrian Broadcasting Corporation in Vienna, and I'm also the chairman of the European Broadcasting Union Loudness Group, P Loud. And we are here at NAB in Las Vegas, 2012, and I just finished the loudness session that was organized here by TC Electronic, where we talked about various aspects of loudness work from a general viewpoint, uh, explaining the you know, intricacies of the algorithm and of the American and European and international loudness standards, as well as hearing about showcases and about use cases, really down to very practical terms. And one of the topics that I concentrated on was clearing up, clearing up a couple of misunderstandings and dangers that I have encountered over the months and years of loudness training. One of those is that people have the impression that we have a lot of loudness standards now internationally. The Americans, the Europeans, the Australians, the Japanese, and that is not true because we have only one, and that is an international one that has been crafted by the International Telecommunication Union, the ITU in Geneva. And that is what we refer to as BS 1770. And since March last year, it has been published in 1770-2, so that is the latest revision. And that includes a so-called gating solution or gating method that we developed in the EBU. And one of the misunderstandings is the way the gate works or for what it's for. And the gate is only there to measure foreground loudness. And that helps to actually loudness balance highly dynamic content better. That's the only reason for the gate. So for your usual legacy content and your 90% of broadcasting content, the gate doesn't make a big difference at all. So that's one of the misunderstandings that the gate is you know, screwing up or gate is altering our measurements so much. That is not true. It's only true for a very small percentage of programming, namely feature films. Important, important part, but the vast majority is not really affected by the gate. So that's one aspect that I concentrated on. Another aspect is that we have to be really aware of how to use loudness processes in broadcasting. Loudness processes have to be really adjusted very well, being not too aggressive and being used in the right context, in the right way. In, especially in Europe, we try to focus on getting the source right, really normalizing the source because it will solve a lot of issues downstream. And in these kind of you know, details and flavors, the individual standards have a few differences or a few, I would say, different approaches. So we have in, in the US the recommended practices A85, for instance, which is comparable to what we have in, the, in Europe, in the EBU, the recommendation R128. And those are similar enough as far as the basis 1770 is concerned but there are flavors around it. And one of the flavors is that in A85, there is a, well, not a focus, but the uh, possibility and the equal possibility to use an anchor signal for loudness normalization. So that means that only a part of the signal is measured, which is usually dialogue. And that might lead to quite different results in loudness measurement for very dynamic content. Whereas we in Europe, we advocate and focus on measuring, measuring the whole signal. So that's one of the differences. One of the other differences that you might encounter is the different target level, which in Europe we have minus 23 and in America there is, it's minus 24. But this is basically just a small difference and doesn't really matter in the practical world unless you talk about program exchange, international program exchange, where you always had to kind of stick to the delivery specifications. So processor issues, to come back to that, we have to be really aware of not using a loudness processor too much because it might alter the you know, average loudness of already compliant material too much. So that's something that is very close to our hearts in the EBU that we are not just putting a processor downstream and everything will be solved. No, we are really trying to go upstream with the processing, with, with, with loudness normalization so that in the ideal world we do not need any loudness processing at master control. So these were the two uh, main aspects, I think, that I focused on in my talk and uh, all the other speakers, Thomas Lund, also Jay from Turner, uh, provided different aspects and several other aspects, Thomas focusing more on the true peak measurement side, which is uh, still important, of course, 
very important to get our signal chain right, not to distort. And Jay giving us use cases from Turner Entertainment, how they handle, you know, on a daily basis their loudness work. So I think all in all, it was a, a quite colorful and vivid session that we experienced here with, uh, you know, also very interesting input from the audience. And uh, we, I think we're quite happy with that.